Hey there fellow adult collectors, welcome back. David Eon here with another virtual catalog tour. I've done several of these. I've been doing them since the end of 2020 and people seem to really like it. I have actually a large library of vintage Toy Fair catalogs and wish list books from various retailers and I've done a few of those and people seem to really like it so I've made it a regular thing now. See, Mattel makes it happen. Mattel Toys 1981. If you attended Toy Fair in 1981 and you were a retailer and you went to the Mattel booth, the salesman would have given you a catalog like this. And there are some real hidden gems in here. Clash of the Titans and a lot of very early electronic games because this was the beginning of that era, handheld electronic games. And also, as you will often see in some of these catalogs, here you're looking at the Golden Dream Barbie. Golden Dream Barbie. As you often see in many of these catalogs, there are items that never made it past the prototype stage, things that were never produced. And at which point I recognize those, I'll point that out for you. And you can go ahead and see if you can find them. Good luck. Now, the catalog will be very Barbie heavy. Here you see the Golden Dream Barbie fashion face. And these heads were popular back in the day. And her Corvette, which I think would go great with a G.I. Joe doll. <laughs> Just saying. Or a G.I. Joe action figure, forgive me. Western Barbie and Dallas Barbie's horse. Mattel, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, Barbie was their biggest property. Not anymore. But that, that really started to fade away with Masters of the Universe, actually, which is not in this catalog. It's too early for Masters of the Universe. So this is going to be very Barbie heavy. And if you've seen me do Mattel catalogs before, you already know that, that there's like half the catalog is Barbie. But I am going to show every page of the catalog, so just stick with me. If you're looking for those action figures and electronic games and other interesting items, um, Peanuts properties and things like that, which are actually pretty interesting in this catalog, then you'll have to put up with a little bit of Barbie first. You get My First Barbie, Happy Birthday Barbie, Beauty Secrets, Sport and Shave Ken. I remember these. He had like 5 o'clock shadow and the shaving kit would temporarily remove it or disguise it. See, here you go. Draw on a beard. Oh, I see. That's how it worked. Draw on a beard, help him shave. <laughs> That's crazy. Kissing Barbie, pretty changes. Hispanic Barbie, black Barbie, pretty changes Barbie. Is that what black and Hispanic looks like? Let's see. I don't know. You tell me. And that's just Mattel trying to pretend to be diverse. And the more they did that, the further they got away from their core property and the less interested people were in them, oddly enough. Roller skating Barbie and Ken. Skipper's boyfriend Scott. Wow, Scott's got a fro. Big time. Sun loving Malibu's. Over here, take a nice look at that 70s perm, even though this is an 81 catalog. Fashions, we'll pan over that really quickly. And we're moving right along here, actually. You know, I'm personally, I'm not too interested in the Barbie myself, but there are people who are. There are people who might have opened this video wanting to see Barbie and they're gonna see it. But you know I never collected Barbie. In my seller days I sold a lot of Barbies. People are primarily interested in vintage when it comes to Barbie. The older the better. Barbie's Dream Pool. That's cool. Barbie's Dream Pool. 
but that was expensive and the patio furniture I guess is separate Barbie's dream house and see we're already on page 19 so don't worry if you're looking for those Clash of the Titans which I can already tell you has some prototype stuff that was never produced and furniture for the house so bathtub and these used to be functional didn't they couldn't you fill it with water and there was like a pump or something or am I thinking of a different set there's a toilet hey guys it says bath, chest, and commode. They don't call it a toilet, they call it a commode. It's a toilet for Barbie. Refrigerator, stocked with food. Some of this stuff you could use for sixth scale dioramas. <laughs> it's not bad detail on a few of those pieces. You can get that toilet for your Deadpool. That humor fits for him. A yellow version of the Corvette. It says remote controlled super vet. Okay. So there is a little, it's a wired remote though. Oh, see, look. It's a wired remote. Keep in mind it was 1981. Traveler motorhome, Star Traveler motorhome that is. And then the townhouse. I showed the townhouse in a different catalog. It's a big piece. It looks like it's pretty flimsily constructed though. And beauty, Barbie doll's dog. It's a dog's life. She must have wired limbs. What do we got here? Perfume maker, play packs, and the fashion maker for basically a glorified coloring set. But you know, kids used to play with that stuff more back in those days. They don't do uh, crafts too much anymore, do they? It's kind of a shame. Lose some of those skills. Barbie Cosmetics. So that's what every girl needs. I'm not a big fan of uh, little girls putting on makeup. I mean, playing with makeup is one thing, but you know, when you see them makeup every day and they're like eight, just doesn't feel right to me. But that's my opinion. Barbie radio, that's neat. Barbie radio. FM microphone. Electric toothbrush. Desk calculator. Awesome. And a cassette player. Those were big in those days, uh, the novelty cassette players. And then here's Star. This is Star, and that's a separate entity from Barbie, if I'm not mistaken. And they don't uh, they don't sell well aftermarket. I don't think these are worth a whole hell of a lot. Kelly, Tracy, Sean. So if you're interested in Star, you could probably pick that collection up cheap. Star Fashions. Trying to spin off from Barbie here. Because these are the same size, I'm pretty sure, like 11 and a half inch standard dolls. If you hear any weird noises, because I've got a cat trying to climb up my leg while I'm doing this. Star fashion case and spout about or sport about car. Can't read. Sport about car. Little dune buggy looking vehicle there. And baby beans, baby bonnet beans, and bare bottom beans, which you can see they've got a little butt flap for when they have to go to the toilet, I guess. Baby beans, which has already been a property for Mattel. These were already out for some time, a couple of years. I remember these in the 70s, and they're still making them here. Again, I don't think these are tremendously expensive aftermarket nowadays and look we're already up to page 35 sweet treats dolls and that kind of reminds me of like 
Little Kittles sets. You remember Little Kittles? Especially with these. These spoonful dolls and the doll is sold actually inside this little bubble on the spoon. That really reminds me of Little Kittles. And we got some uh, cookies, little cookie play sets, and they come inside the cookie. And here's some unique pieces. And they did make these, and you don't see them too often. I don't think they go for a lot either aftermarket. And that is the gorgeous creatures. And you see they're basically, again, the 11 and a half inch doll body type. But now they've got heads that make them look like animals. You got a horse, a hippopotamus, and a cow there. Most people don't even remember that Mattel ever even did this. And the remnants of the Sunshine family. And this is probably the last time. I could be wrong. I think this is the last time they did Sunshine family. And they started doing them when? In 1973? And Sunshine family dolls, these bodies were used for a lot of other figures. They were repurposed quite a bit. These are the same bodies that were used for Space 1999, for Welcome Back Cotter, for Mork and Mindy. They got repurposed a lot. And over here you got Furry, Purry, and Baby Squeaks. I guess little fake hamsters for if you didn't want to buy your kid a real one. Probably better off getting them the toy one. Because, you know, most little kids don't do right with pets anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Let them practice with these first. It's a good idea. Baby tippy toes. She walks on her toes and pushes her own carriage. I bet that got boring quick. Moving right along. Baby cries for you. So basically baby never shuts up. Drowsy doll. And it says the original drowsy and still selling strong. She's such a snuggly talking sleepy head. Says eight different things. Yeah, I thought so. Pull string talker. There's the loop. And love and touch doll. Little baby love and touch. And they tried to get the girl's hair to look like the dolls. They didn't. They didn't quite pull it off. Love and touch baby. Love and touch baby scale. For in case you need to weigh your doll, I guess. Well, it does double as like, what, a bassinet? So, <laughs> I guess it makes sense. Now, here's a blast from the past 80s item here. If you grew up in the 80s, you know what this is, and that is Monchichi, new for 1981. Do you remember these? These were immensely popular. I remember seeing these in the drugstore, I remember seeing these in other stores, and in Woolworth, and I remember, um, I remember seeing lots of girls in school, like in sixth grade, had these. Was I in sixth grade in 1981? Hell, I don't remember. But I remember a lot of a lot of little girls having these, these Monchichi dolls. And the older ones are kind of hard to find now, but there they all are. It says Boutique Monchichi Fashions. I guess they're outfits for your little Monchichi dolls. And then accessories and furniture. They got a bunch of stuff here. Fashions for the five inch doll. Fashions, I guess these are for the eight inch dolls. And then this is for the 18 inch variety so that you can dress them up. And then there's some furnishings, a little bed and rocking chair and odds and ends. And here's a, uh, a hammock. That's an interesting idea actually, putting them in a hammock. Do you remember Monchichi? Because I'm sure that would trigger a lot of memories for people that grew up in the early 80s. Preschool tough stuff. They still kind of make this stuff today. Nothing too fascinating here, but we're moving along. That's page 45. Tough stuff wonder blocks. Preschool tough stuff trucks. You, I remember these blocks, actually, kind of Lego-ish, or Duplo-ish, if uh, I want to be more specific, since Duplos were the larger variety. Tools, I remember these tools. I remember the, the, um, 
the chainsaw and the drill specifically. Does that look familiar to you? It should if you grew up in that era. It's a gigantic calculator, some letter blocks, and over here, this is more my territory, these guitars, and they are guitars, not guitars, because they they wind up and play music. I used to have a full collection of these and a collection of the original Jack in the Boxes from Mattel, because they made tons of them, not just these three. This is kind of fading away from it, but these were big in the uh, 60s and 70s. Part of the collection I lost, you know, I did a video about that some time ago, stolen collection. And then Chatter Chums, Talking Chatter Chums, which I do have a set of Chatter Chums and I've been asked to do a showcase on them and I will do that in the near future. So watch out for that. The Talking Chatter Chums, I like those. And then some other little bits and pieces, a phone and the camera, measuring tape, so on and so forth. Some interesting stuff there. Getting into preschool trucks. First Wheels Railroad, little portable playset and a handful of trucks and a little playset. Give you a close up on the trucks. We're moving into Hot Wheels territory here shortly, and then we'll get on to action figures. Do you remember these? See and say talking games, which are not easy to find. Uh, the C and says you'll find a C and say before you find a C and say talking game, and of course, it's your best luck if you can find any of them still functional because they are pull string talkers. They are not electronic. There's the traditional C and says. Pretty good aftermarket for these if they're in working condition and repairing them is not very simple because they are not easy to open. If you can get them open easy without busting them up then you can repair it but it's not so simple. There's the Bugs Bunny CNC talking phone. Talking phones are pretty desirable in the aftermarket too. CNC talking learning system. It looks like a phonics system. Surfing Snoopy, Swimming Snoopy, Rowing Snoopy, Tell Time Clocks. Unproduced. Something happened with the contract, if I'm thinking of the right year, and these, to the best of my knowledge, were never made. Never made by Mattel. And the clocks, the Mickey clock was made, the Snoopy clock was not unless I'm mistaken. I think this is uh, the right year though. You can look for it. I mean, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong and you can tell me in the comments section and it's cool because that's how it is. I mean, it is what it is. Lots to learn. Desk. Tuggy. Did they make Tuggy? I think they did make Tuggy, the turtle. I don't remember Tuggy though. Baby toys. So I'll just let you go ahead and get a glance of that real quick. Oh, and Tumble Turvy Triangle with the uh, Terrify Your Child with a Creepy Clown option, apparently. <laughs> we'll, we'll go on to the next page. The Littles, which is what? The remnants of Little Kittles? Littles Dollhouse and figures. Anybody collect these? I know they made this stuff. Here's the inside of the dollhouse. They got gigantic heads. And some furnishings. A toilet! Awesome. They don't make stuff like that, do they now? Little toilet lid opens. Excellent. Littles dolls. Very, very skinny, aren't they? And various uh, play sets and such. 
things for the interior of the home. Very Victorian looking furnishings and accessories. Hot Wheels. And we'll glaze over these real quick. I'm not a hat I'm not a Hot Wheels collector, but again, you know, someone who is might really want to see this. So we're gonna take a quick look at that. Just let you uh, soak in these cars. And Hot Wheels, I mean, Mattel still casts the exact same vehicles in different colors, and they've been doing that for ever, for decades, really. Just the same vehicles over and over and over again. But there might be a few here that were made for the first time. That's very possible. Let's get you a good eye full of those. And I see something on the next page that I think is a lot more interesting. We get over here, and you've got some superhero themed vehicles. But then down here, the scene machines. Who remembers these? It's got the little hole in the back, and when you look inside of it, like you see the kid demonstrating with the Hulk van, you can see something inside as long as there's light shining through the windshields. I think I actually had the Captain America one when I was young. More Hot Wheels. Give you another close up on these. And these are packs. So I guess these are sold all in one box. You know, Hot Wheels does that. There's an example of how that looks packaged. Some carrying cases. That wheel carrying case was very popular. Some trucks. And a stunt set. It says Flying Bronco. Or Fly In Bronco. Wipe out. And then Crisscross Crash. Crisscross Crash. I remember the commercials for that. And then on the next page coming up, we got City, STO, and Go. So it's like a fold-out city. Like that. And it can fold into multiple platforms like this. See how it is. And then folds up into this case. Looks like... Uh, Looks like the inspiration for the Hasbro ARA era G.I. Joe Mobile Command Center, actually. The way that it layers out. There's another one. Service Center. See? And then Scorchers on the next page. We got the What does that say? Photo finish. Photo finish racing set. Scorchers vehicles. Anybody ever have those racing sets? I had one that an uncle gave to me as a Christmas gift. And I used to like to launch cars off of it. It came with a car. I don't remember which set it was though. And then down here the uh, spin out stunt set. Because it spins through three times before it reaches the end. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Some remote control vehicles, radio control, excuse me, radio control vehicles, Porsche and Datsun, Ford Ranger, 
very simple remotes. If you look at that remote, it probably has like forward and the ability to turn either left or right. I remember having a remote control from that era. Now here's a here's the real deal, and that's got to be expensive back in those days because this actual controls. I had one that could. It was a remote. Another uncle, same uncle, I believe, actually, gave this to me on a Christmas, and it was a Corvette, and it could go forward and make a left turn, and that was all it could do. And the memory machine down here, where you program in what you want it to do and then let it drive it says RC car with a RAM chip computer memory program it while it's driving or standing still its memory stores up to 26 instructions for over two and a half minutes of automatic driving by today's standards that's not very advanced hydro racer remote control speedboat power shifters programmable car and remember this is the era when we're just starting to get into this kind of stuff sky devils vertebird night patrol and power shifters midnighters wings away I don't think they made wings away that looks like the bottom of a Colonial Viper from Battlestar Galactica, which was also a Mattel property. I don't think Wings Away was made. Star Maker Guitar probably was. I think they I think they made the Star Maker Guitar, didn't they? It's got one string. Can't screw that up. Magical Musical Thing and the Electronic Connection Activity Center Mickey Mouse Cassette Player Learn and Play Electronic Organ and Musical Wizard I don't think they made Musical Wizard either take a good look at that did they make this? I don't think they made Musical Wizard I think that's uh, trapped in prototype heaven Dolly World, So Perfect, and Chocolate Candy Maker. That sounds messy. I bet you the kids tore that up. Master Caster, Make Your Own Toy Cars and it's wax so you you melt down the wax pellets and you make the toy cars out of wax what do you do when you run out of wheels all pro passer Roger Staubach and Steve Garvey baseball pitching machine okay cone heads I don't think they ever made cone heads or blizzles and the blizzle is, you, you see it's just a bubble maker blow toy. Did they make blizzles? I'm not sure if they did. I'm pretty sure they didn't make the cone heads though. And basically you put, for, this looks like Play-Doh, but it's a masher. It's like a baby toy masher or a baby feeder. You know how they have those things where you put food inside of a net and they, and they gum it like the infants? you would put whatever in here fruit or ice cream or whatever and you'd squeeze it and it would the pulp would come out of the holes on the top like hair and the kid would eat it and it sounds desperately messy chirping woodstock this was made but not by Mattel I know you can find a chirping woodstock but if you do it will have no Mattel markings on it I think it was done by um, United Features Syndicate made it themselves Funtronics Tag Red Light Green Light and Jax 
and we're getting into the early era of handheld games and these are obviously for very young people Master Jewel Thief <laughs> a board game of sorts Monday Night Football Rocket Hockey and Hawaiian Punch the Game which is a desirable aftermarket game they actually made this and it's got these the pieces weren't this big by the way but you made these play-doh kind of little pieces and you had these figures and you used them to stomp if you got over on top of them on the game that air hockey game looks like they're way too close to get anything done Learning Fun, the Children's Discovery System. Got a whole library of uh, modules there, as they say. I wonder how much RAM this thing had. Couldn't have been much. And there you go, kids. Clash of the Titans. This is the only year I believe that Clash of the Titans was released and there it says new for 1981 Clash of the Titans which is a very desirable sought-after action figure series now Lord of the Marsh Thalo Sharon Perseus Carded examples of these are difficult now. At least decent cards. You got Pegasus over here. And then of course the Kraken in the background there, which is a grail for a lot of action figure collectors to try to find even a loose example of the Kraken that's in decent condition is not easy at all. Boxed examples are almost unheard of at this point. On the next page, I'll tell you right now, I don't think anything on either of these pages were produced. You've got a five and a half inch Bubo toy. I don't believe that they ever made this. It says, uh, Bubo the owl has wings that flap, his head turns manually, and he makes a clicking sound. His soft claws can grip a child's finger like a perch. I don't think they made Bubo. I don't think they made these accessories either. The helmet, shield, and sword, which were sold separately, or slated to be sold separately. And I don't believe they made this playset either. I think this got left on the drawing board. It looks like it's just a cardboard cutout anyway. I don't think they made it. And again, you know, if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. But I think those never made it out of the prototype stage. This either. Ralph. Ralph the robot who travels over rough surfaces, it says. I don't think they ever made Ralph either. The amazing Ralph, rather. And you see it's supposed to be controlled with some kind of headset. They probably never could get the bugs out of it. Radio controlled robot. The Crusher. Another grail for a lot of action figure collectors is the Crusher. Sort of a, a villain to stretch Armstrong, if you will. Crusher, the growing monster, squeeze him up and open the valve and he returns to normal shape. And then down here, Rodan. And this is the very last that you will see from Mattel of anything Shogun Warriors related. And Rodan is probably from the Mattel 
properties, the stuff that was imported from Popey, probably the hardest Shogun Warrior piece to find, loose or boxed. So that's the grail for a lot of people. And then over here, do you remember this one? Because they did make it. It's a big piece too. That is Grigori. Big bad vampire bat creature. And it's not Gregory, it's Gregory. The name is hyphenated. And then down here, Flash Gordon. The Flash Gordon figures. Uh, the light's a little screwy right there. Beast Man. That's uh, not the Beast Man I'm familiar with. Voltan. Thun, the Lion Man. He doesn't look like a lion. Actually, Beast Man looks more like a lion than he does, unless they mix the names up. <laughs> The captain. Lizard woman. Ming. And then Flash Gordon himself. There's Flash. And of course, you can't forget Dr. Zarkov. And these are getting harder to find on the card too. These Flash Gordon figures, the values on these are coming up in the last few years, especially. And more electronics. World Championship Football, World Championship Baseball. Any of these look familiar to you? Have you seen these before? Look Alive, Football, Basketball, and Baseball. The 80s was the era of the handheld game. They don't make them anymore, except like retro examples. Football 2, Basketball 2, Soccer 2, Baseball and Bowling. Ian, the Invisible Alien Neutralizer which basically is like a pretend scanner and you would move it around the room and it would play hot and cold with you. It would beep more furiously, if I remember this correctly, as you got closer to wherever your target is supposed to be and then you're supposed to shoot at the target, the invisible target. It took a lot of imagination to play with Ian. Ticker Tape Fever, and Dungeons and Dragons. I know that a lot of collectors really desire this one. This is a, a popular board game. Computer Labyrinth game, because it is electronic. Both of these are, obviously. Because this is the Mattel Electronics section. But yeah, this is one of those games that a lot of old schoolers look for. Computer backgammon and computer chess. I bet those were expensive back in the day. I bet they were real expensive. None of this stuff was cheap. Any electronics in the 80s, all that solid state stuff, these were not cheap. Brain baffler and computer gin. And then finally, the Horse Race Analyzer. And a Super AC Adapter that they were selling separately. And that is page 119, ladies and gentlemen. And that is the end of the book. Any memories jogged for you here? Do you see anything here that you recall having? Do you see anything here that you still have? Or that now that you have seen it, 
you're curious about it, you'd like to go out and find it, have it for your own collection, tell us about it in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the catalog tours. Are you enjoying these? I know the video can be a little long because there's a lot of pages in most of these catalogs. And like I said, sometimes it's heavy on certain things like this was kind of Barbie heavy, so I know a lot of people watching this channel probably aren't too interested in Barbie, but there are some viewers who might really want to see it, and like I said, in all fairness, I'll let them I'll let them have a look at it. I do try to show every page of the catalog. This whole section is like right up my alley though. Right here. <laughs> I love this kind of stuff. The Flash Gordon figures, which I don't have anymore. Greg Gorey, I don't think I ever had that. Crusher, Rodan. This stuff, you can just forget it, I think. I don't think they made any of it, I'm pretty sure. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. I hope you did. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new, all that good stuff. Check out our other videos. We do a lot on this channel. Vintage commercials, showcases of vintage toys and action figures, modern unboxings, um, adult toy collecting discussions, so on and so forth. We do a lot here. All in all nostalgia all the time. So thanks for watching. And what more can I say? But we will see you again soon.